Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real world self publishing and small business experience with you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. Now, let's get on with today's show. Great comment came in on my video about consumers cutting subscriptions in response to inflation. In that video, I had noted how my husband cut multiple subscriptions as he reviewed his post-retirement expenses. The video comment said, I feel like this is a branding issue. If he felt he had a personal connection, ongoing conversation with each one of those brands, rather than just receiving a service, he wouldn't have unsubscribed. What do you think? Oh boy, do I have some thoughts on this. I recently paid to subscribe to a friend's Patreon channel. While this writer does create thoughtful blog content that I enjoy reading, I really subscribe because I have a long-standing friendship with him for about a decade or more now. So when he started this new chapter of his content creation journey, I was glad to sponsor him. The commenter is right in that people who have a relationship with a creator are more likely to become paying and continuing subscribers. That's the foundation on which Patreon is built, even though we have to wonder if it's just a pity buy. But let me ask you how many of your favorite creators you're willing and able to financially support. For example, let's say you want to support 10 creators at $3 per month on Patreon. That's about $30 per month or a whopping $360 per year. And that's just for 10 creators. I don't know about you, but I have dozens to maybe a hundred or so creators I'd be willing to support maybe just not able. Even though I have been talking about the hard dollar costs that are causing consumers to cut back on subscriptions, I don't think that's the whole story. Let's talk about the cost in time. Let's use those same 10 creators who each might create a five minute subscriber only video per week. That's a really low estimate since I would think that closer to 10 minutes would be more common even up to 30 minutes might not be unusual. But for the sake of example, let's stick with just five minutes. That's 50 minutes per week for each of 52 weeks per year. That's just over 43 hours of time to watch this content that you are paying for. That's over an entire standard 40 hour work week of time per year with just five minute videos. In fact, that's one of the reasons my husband ditched a non Amazon subscription that allowed him access to books and other resources. When he unsubscribed, the group reached out to him and offered him even more materials for free just to stay in the program. He declined saying that he just doesn't have the time, even though he's retired. Now that he's retired, he has a lot of other things he'd rather do. There's also the issue of content fatigue. I don't know about you, but there comes a point where I can't watch even one more video. Even if you're engaged with a person and their personal brand, even in love with them and what they do, there are limits in time, money, and energy that will prevent you from paying to subscribe and support every creator you enjoy. YouTube continually sends emails about the ways they support creators. Let's rephrase that. YouTube wants to support qualified creators. Again, my husband provides a great real life example. He had a YouTube channel for many years. He amassed maybe 2,500 to 3,000 subscribers, which is respectable. And it allowed him to become a paid YouTube partner. If I remember right, at peak, he was making maybe around $1,000 a year from his videos. Due to work, education, and life priorities, he walked away from his channel, but he didn't delete it. He still received some ad revenue share, but it was way less than when he was active. 
Then YouTube threw him out of the partner program a while back for not qualifying under their new requirements. In August 2022, you need to have 4,000 watch hours on your channel in the last 12 months, have 1,000 or more subscribers, and have to have uploaded a video within the past six months in order to qualify. This knocks out many small creators, regardless of how engaged their fans are. And it gets worse. If you're not eligible to participate in the YouTube Partner Ad Revenue Program, YouTube can still show and profit from ads on your videos. What? It's happening on my channel. I'm a business person. I understand why YouTube is doing this. Storing and serving up and administering billions of hours of video is an enormous cost. I once estimated that YouTube had about 30,000 years worth of video on it. I just saw another estimate of 60,000 years and 500 hours of video are being uploaded every minute of every day. Every minute. Even if you have a highly engaged audience on YouTube, if you don't meet their qualifications, you're not getting monetized. So is Patreon the solution? A Patreon blog post from December 2020 featured creators who were making over $200,000 per year on Patreon. Many of them are also on YouTube. The lowest YouTube subscriber count for this group was about 34,000 subscribers, up to 7.2 million subscribers. These are not your average content creators for sure. Comparing number of Patreon patrons to YouTube subscribers for this elite group, the buy-in rate was anywhere from 0.2% to 6%. There were two outliers at 11% for a podcast by political liberals and 30% for a Dungeons & Dragons D&D gamer channel. What do these examples tell us? Even the most successful creators on Patreon and YouTube don't have 100% paid buy-in from their fans. I've estimated that approximately 1% of your author or creator fan base will actually pay for your books or content. A monthly subscription can be a huge commitment for consumers, even if they like the creators. One system that I've liked for rewarding and supporting creators is TikTok's system of virtual coin gifts. You prepay with real cash for a package of virtual coins. If you like a video someone has created, you can easily, with a couple of clicks, send them these coins which they can cash in for real cash at some point in the future. Sadly though, if you register as a business account on TikTok, this monetization feature is not available to you, at least not presently. Why? Personal account creators are making money from their content. Why can't business accounts? I think if these personal creators are making money, they're a business too. Sorry for that jealous rant. However, according to a Business Insider article, even top-earning TikTokers don't make too much this way. One creator with over 2 million followers reported making $1,664 from January to May 2021. That was an average of between $9 and $38 per day. Top TikTokers usually make the most money from brand sponsorships. This is not a fan sponsorship or gift. Brand sponsorships are big brand companies who offer these creators money. So that's not the same subscriber income we're discussing here. YouTube has introduced a similar thank you gift system. However, you need to qualify for the YouTube Partner Program in order to be able to use this feature. I hope that direct-to-creator payments do become more available on social media and content delivery sites. 
Unfortunately, these are one-off purchases and not sustainable and reliable subscriber income. I liken it to buskers and street performers who hope for passers-by to throw some money their way for their music or other entertainment. For literally about a century, consumers have been conditioned to the availability of free content on radio, TV, and the internet. People got used to free TV and radio shows paying by putting up with sponsors' ads. But people got annoyed with ads. In the 1970s, the hope in paying for cable TV was a commercial-free experience. It was for a while. Cable has lots of ads now, except for the more expensive premium options. Unfortunately, the early internet was built on the ad-sponsored model, just like broadcast TV. Advertisers hungered for the eyeballs that websites got and were willing to pay for them. Early website owners and bloggers profited from including advertisers' ads. Some site owners and bloggers got a bit cocky, thinking it was their quality content and engagement that made them successful and profitable. As web tools got better, easier, and cheaper, competition for content increased exponentially. Lots of quality content flooded the internet. As with TV, consumers got annoyed with ads on the internet. Ad blockers are now common, not just for annoyance reasons, but for privacy too. Today, content creators are struggling to convert to paid content models like Patreon and Substack. The world had the chance to break the ad-sponsored model when the internet arrived, but it didn't. However, the system wasn't able to handle payments at scale directly from individual subscribers in the early days. Getting paid from advertising sponsors was easier. So here we are again. Free will always win. Realize that those who are willing and able to pay for your content are precious and rare. Adjust your expectations accordingly. I hope you found that helpful or at least interesting. And if you did, please rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on whatever podcast app you like to use. I'm on all the major ones, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you like the YouTube video better, all you have to do is subscribe to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so you get an alert when there's a new video up. I would appreciate it if you would share the audio or the video with your friends on social media. My self-published books are available available on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. All you have to do is search for my name, Heidi Thorne, and you'll get a list of all of the available titles. If you'd like to connect with me, my website is HeidiThorne.com. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I look forward to talking with you again in the next episode, and in the meantime, have a great day.